Hello everyone, Bridget Ayer here. Welcome to another edition of Faith in Action and also All About the Grace. We're doing a um, simulcast here, kind of. We're doing a YouTube show and we're also gonna be using this for Catholic Radio Indy. So welcome. And our topic today is very timely where we're gonna be talking about the corona pandemic, but we're gonna be talking about it from managing anxiety because we have a lot of anxiety at this time. And joining us, um, today is Judy Phillips. She's a clinical pastoral associate in distance counseling with the Pastoral Solutions Institute and also a uh, parishioner at Our Lady of Mount Carmel for our local um, community. So Judy, welcome to Faith, Faith in Action and All About the Grace. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate this opportunity to be with you. Well, Judy's a mental health professional and, you know, we talk about uh, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, how the healthcare workers are really on the front line of this um, pandemic, but but kind of the second wave of that is the is the mental health community. Have you seen an uptick in um, need from your perspective as a mental health professional? Absolutely, it's definitely there's a significant need. Um, I would say for sure that even if it's not reflected in say the number of new cases that I'm taking on, for sure there's an increase just in general level of anxiety for people overall. But even so for some of those people that I might work with who have just general anxiety, that there may be an increased need for frequency of sessions. So rather than perhaps meeting once a week, I might be meeting with them two times a week. Or if it's in a more severe situation, it might even be more than that. And you are Catholic counselors, right? So that's, right. that's really important. I mean, for Catholics to, if they can seek out a cast, a Catholic counselor, because that adds a completely different dimension. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. So everything that we do in the work that we do as counselors with pastoral solutions is framed from the perspective of our Catholic faith. We incorporate our Catholic spirituality and theology, but essentially the lens through which we look at the problems, the person that's in the session, uh, how to approach the problems, it is all framed from what God intends for us in our lives, what he intends for us in being in relationship with him, as well as with other people. And, and that's that's framed differently than what somebody would get from somebody who's uh, a, perhaps a different denomination, potentially, um, or just somebody who uh, is, is a secular counselor. Judy, tell us what, what is anxiety? H how would you describe that? And, and some people, you know, is it good or bad? You know, because some people say it's good, some people say it's bad. At what point does it become bad? Right. Three well, so questions there. <laughs> so um, some level of anxiety or fear is common, what we call, quote, normal, although I don't really like to use that word. It's something usual that all of us experience uh, at most days of our life. In fact, um, typical anxiety, what I would call it is um, really uh, when we're, we're dealing with uh, immediate fear, something that's immediately happening, um, immediate, not fear, but immediate danger. There's something immediately uh, that I'm facing that is uh, a, a difficult situation. So that's, okay. that's typical and normal. I mean, those are like my kids, that, my kids are crying. Right. I got to hurry up and get to work. I got a big project due, that yeah. kind of stuff. Well, it's, it's more of like the example you gave of my kids are crying because that's an okay. immediate need, right? That you, we have to respond to versus okay. the, I have, I have to hurry up and get to work or okay. <clears throat> I have a big project coming up. Now those so are, it, those are and, real, okay. but it's anticipating. Okay. okay? That's so, the word. so the difference really is related to the time frame because the, the anxiety that, um, that, that becomes more than what we would typically deal with is the anticipation of what if or you know something might happen or take place uh it's it's that anticipation um versus that this is something that really is 
you know, an issue that I have to deal with right now. So that's the big difference between the two. Okay. If, if you're just joining us right now, we're talking with Judy Phillips. She's a clinical pastoral associate in distance counseling with the Pastoral Solutions Institute and also a parishioner at Our Lady Mount Carmel if you're part of our um, local community here. And um, you're, wor- you're with uh, Greg Popcheck is a, is a show that's on Catholic Radio Indy, More to Life, which is one of my favorite shows, actually. So you're actually in that, um, that practice. So I just right. wanted to give a plug to, to Greg there. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thanks. Is there a difference with regular anxiety, if there is such a thing, to pandemic coronavirus anxiety? I mean, we're in a different time now. Right, right. I think, and, and, you know, and just kind of thinking about that, yes, I would say to some degree there is, the difference being that really um, the pandemic anxiety, everybody in the world to some degree or another is experiencing mm-hmm. it with us at the same time versus anxiety that people, you know, um, might be dealing with that is that, that they themselves may be dealing with individually is very different because to some degree or another, all of us are at that heightened level now because of this being so unprecedented and, um, you know, there being uncertainties for sure. Well, you know, that's a dynamic I never thought of, like the the collective or group anxiety, which is, you know, maybe you've worked through it, but then someone else comes by and says, hey, uh," you know, or they keep putting, putting these on social media. I have a friend that keeps posting, you know, like the the, the cases and the deaths and that kind of thing. And, you know, maybe you've gotten your anxiety under control and then all of a sudden you see that, you know, it's like, <laughs> exactly. ah, no. Yes. Uh, so, so, um, people react differently to, to stress. So that's something else I think we need to, to kind of take into consideration as we're all dealing with this. Um, and, and, and Judy and I talked the other night about this as we were preparing for this interview of just, how differently she and her husband and myself and my husband react and how our children are acting or reacting. Can you talk a little bit about how people kind of react to stress and what maybe what we might need to be aware of with ourselves and with others in that regard? Yeah. Well, I think your statement right there is uh, that question sort of leading into it is perfect because it's, it's one, it's knowing ourselves. How Mm -hmm. do I typically respond to Um, anxiety, stress, also uh, what do I know my needs are, what helped me to handle it the best that I possibly can, you know, so that's one thing. The other thing is important for us to know those closest to us, our, Mm -hmm. our spouses, our children, you know, how is it that they respond as well? Because as you were mentioning, and we were talking about this, um, I need a little bit of information and I'm good with that. My husband likes more detailed. Um, that more detailed is too much for me, but I know that about myself. Um, so mm-hmm. I have to put some parameters in place for myself. And then also thinking about our children too. So, you know, some common reactions that people have to stress and anxiety can be um, just nervous, nervousness, kind of worry. Um, there can be just heightened anticipation as I was talking about anxiety in general. Uh, Mm -hmm. There can be um, somatic issues. It's difficult to sleep. Some people have difficulty eating, thinking, um, you know, those kinds of things, general nervousness or jitteriness. There can also be um, difficulty with really um, healthy breathing. And by that, I mean, you know, really being able to take full deep cleansing breaths, which most of us on a, on a given basis in general in our society don't breathe deeply enough. So kinds of things. So those are, those are all indicators. I think, you know, also for some people, and I think a lot of times for children, uh, it can be one or the other extreme as it can be for us as adults, which is Mm -hmm. that it can be, um, withdrawal, really quiet, um, not saying much, might be overly emotional or especially sensitive. Um, At the same time, there's the other end of the spectrum, which there can be a lot of, because of jitteriness, 
um, energy, seeming to be have difficulty settling down or calming down, you know, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. That's, as, we, as I said, you know, we experience those very same things as adults, but, um, but also for children. And I think it's so important, especially for our children at this time to be sensitive to that because it can be very easy for us as adults with the level of stress that this pandemic brings um, for us to kind of get tunnel vision. And I, I do want to ask you about humor in this time because it's kind of a tricky thing. You know, I, I mean, we've all talked, we've all been on social media a lot and I mean, the, the memes and the, and the humor has been really kind of priceless in a good way, mm -hmm. but you know, this also, it's a very serious time. So how do you, I mean, I feel kind of weird about joking too. So how do you figure that out about, about humor? Cause humor can be a good way to, kind of deal with stress too right so right right you want to make a comment about that I know it's a, maybe it's a strange question but you get what I'm no, thinking right I think I do and, and I think it's a good question actually so again sensitivity as I was saying about awareness of ourselves and others I think the same thing is true about humor it is good it can be very good it can be a good release for us it's important for us to be able to laugh and um you know to have that kind of release of of energy of especially of the stress and the energy that comes from that but I think we have to be really sensitive to what is the humor about so mm -hmm. one way that I typically would say to guide that would be you know things specific to the coronavirus that kind of thing I really believe that it's best to not necessarily be joking about that kind of stuff because that is that's real it is serious we don't know who uh, who might be on our social media, who has a family member who might be dealing with things. So we have to be really sensitive to that and responsible in the things that we're putting out there that we might be finding you know, humor in. But I do think that all of us can relate to uh, some of the things that we're facing with- Like the, the toilet pandemic. paper, the you toilet know, paper. I mean, there's yeah. something um, about that. Yes, yeah. That, the extra eating, I think everyone that I've spoken to in the course of this has said, like, oh my gosh, you know, like I find myself in the kitchen, you know, all the time. It's sort of mindless and just the availability now because we're contained in our homes, you know. So I think those are things. But also, you know, I think if, and we, when we take it um, in the context of, you know, family, you know, it's one thing to... Uh, kind of have some humor within our families and that kind of thing. But really we want to be aware of ourselves and, and reminding our family members that, you know, we don't want to just be putting certain things out there on social media um, or via text or whatever to just anyone, you know, we have to be sensitive to that. And so it might be okay within the context of our family system to be having some jokes, but you know, in general, we want to be very sensitive to that. We need to take a quick break. Um, so when we come back, we were going to give you tips on how to manage your stress during a pandemic, a topic I never thought we'd be talking about. So stay tuned for more. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we are talking with Judy Phillips. She is a, I wanna look at her title here to make sure I get it right. She's a clinical pastoral associate in distance counseling with the Pastoral Solutions Institute and also a parishioner at Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And um, we're talking about managing anxiety during a pandemic. Um, again, a topic I didn't think I'd ever be covering in my lifetime. Um, so Judy, I wanna talk about tips what can we be doing and what should we be doing and and i i do want to get to one of my other questions that i didn't get to before the break and that's about kind of maybe i don't know if I, the right thing to say is like lowering our expectations or kind of reframing or you know because 
we were all operating at a certain level. You know, our kids were in school. We were working at the office. You know, those of us who work outside the home, we had certain, we were going to the gym to work out. You know, we had going to mass, you know, going to adoration. We were doing all these great things. And then all of a sudden, you know, things changed so abruptly. So we need to change our expectations too, you know, talk about that and how we can kind of manage maybe our expectations into what we were doing as to what we're doing now. Cause we've got a new kind of set of situation here. Right. Yeah, you're right. We do have to kind of take a pause and kind of go, okay, we have to reframe and refocus on, um, you know, what's happening right now and what is this quote new normal that we're dealing with. And so, you know, we have to, um, be willing to consider the way things are different and what is that going to mean. So I think one of the biggest things that, that I think is important is communication. I mean, it seems like a no brainer, but again, when we're under stress, people deal with it differently. And again, some people go inward and some people avoid just altogether, um, mm -hmm. maybe not necessarily physically, but emotionally. And so we have to, we have to be purposeful. We have to be really intentional about what we're doing and what we're thinking. So for example, me working from home, I'm typically used to not a lot of people here, um, not noise during the day. We kind of regroup things like that. Um, the house is relatively in order, you know, things like that. And in our routine would be that we're going to work together in the evening to kind of put everything back in order. So now we have to take a, an assessment of, okay, reality is all of us are here. What does that look like over the course of the day? And in what can my expectations realistically be? Again, keeping very much in the forefront of our mind, the fact that everybody, including our children, is experiencing stress right now. So what does that look like and how do we adjust those expectations? Well, again, communicating about it is going to be important. Um, thinking about and talking about with one another, including the children, what does it look like to start and end our work and school days now? Um, what does it look like uh, in the middle of the day? Are we planning to come together to have lunch together? And if we are, you know, how are we working together to kind of clean up from that and to have some time to communicate um, with each other, you know, in those kinds of things. So it's really about um, taking an assessment of the current situation and, and recognizing that, yep, this is really, you know, um, unprecedented and we have to take that into consideration. If we keep our expectations the same as far as like, house being in order, level of noise, all of that, we're going to be, we're setting ourselves up for a real big fall because it's not going to be that way. We're just not able to come and go in the ways that we've known previously. We're not able to have perhaps the kind of physical space in which we've been used to previously. So it is really important, again, to be intentional, to think about it, to talk about it, to work together as a family, to have a plan about that okay so we've got about roughly uh i don't know eight ten no, six minutes left so let's talk about some tips and i want to give a little bit of time at the end for you to give some resources there's so many things i want to talk about we might have to do a part two seriously okay, okay. <laughs> so okay. um so go ahead and give us some some tips of of how to deal with stress okay well i i want to i want to really bring in our faith here because i feel like it gives sure absolutely a framework to yes um to dealing with this and um you know i work with dr greg popchak and uh one of the things that that um he talks about is really uh the four pillars of the domestic church you know within our families and um, it's a really beautiful thing that can give us really the structure and the routine that we need um, that really God intends for us and is calling us to in any given moment, but most especially during this time. And um, it kind of goes back to a little bit of what I was talking about just a moment ago, as, as far as communication and, and working together and those things. But the four pillars of the domestic church are... I'll write this down. Go ahead. Sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this are is good. Working, working together, praying together, talking together, and playing together. 
And really what we want to do is we want to ensure that we are spending a part of each day in each one of those four areas. Because what that does is it, it's, it's theology of the body, essentially. It keeps us connected with God, with one another. It's expression of love back and forth between the members of the family. And it's really, it's really what we're intended in living out our daily lives in this pandemic, as well as when things get back to some somewhat of a, a different routine than what we're experiencing now during this, this time of um, quarantine and things like that. So what does that look like? How do we do that? Well, as I was saying, you know, we might start out the day where we've had a conversation, we have a plan together as a family of what our work and school day looks like starting together. But we start out the day with just a simple prayer to say, Lord, thank you for this new day. Help us to be a good support to one another over the course of this day, being able to extend ourselves in love and to, to work together, to talk together, to play together and pray together as a good family and and amen, you know, something that simple. And so then that we're working together to set the table for lunch or breakfast or whatever it is. And while we're doing that, we're talking about what is it that brought me joy in my day, even in the midst of this pandemic? You know, what, what did I experience that brought me joy or where in the course of my day did I experience God? Maybe it was my sibling, you know, helped me with I don't know, some homework or something like that, you know, but then also the one that we have a tendency as adults to forget about is um, playing together, but mm -hmm. so that we are doing that daily, daily, daily. And especially as you were talking about earlier, Bridget, about the importance of humor, that we want to build that in every day. So not, you know, it's not something we add on top of every once in a while, but that we spend 15, 20 minutes all right, we've all worked together to clean up the dinner table. We put everything away. That's an expression of love and support to one another. Let's, we're going to spend the next 15 to 20 minutes playing a game of Uno or something like that. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, um, uh, what's that? Um, I spy, you know, something, whatever mm -hmm. simple thing it is. But, you know, we set a timer and we do that. And then once that's over, then you know, maybe it's in the evening. And so we wrap up with evening prayer or simple rosary or something like that. But, but that's it. That's the foundation. And those are things that we can do very easily over the course of the day. You know, so we have structure, we have routine, it's consistent. And those are the things that are important for us in a time like this, that we need that along with exercise, good sleep, good, um, good food, um, you know, taking time to connect that's at the core of our being god created us to be in relationship with him and with others and living according to those four pillars of the domestic church it's quite simple to be able to do that and it's a very beautiful thing to do well those are great i mean I, that's i i don't think i've ever heard I don't know how I've missed that. <laughs> I know Dr. Greg Fry talks about that all the time. And I, I read one of his books about um, discovering God together, which I really um, have used that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but so what do you think people of faith, and we only have a couple minutes left, but people of faith, do you think they are able to deal with anxiety a little bit better or, 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 or does that, that play a role? I mean, you get what I'm saying? I do. Are, are they able to put it in a, in a perspective, have a different worldview than maybe someone that doesn't have any faith at all? Absolutely. They can. But I would say, I think, as we all know, all of us struggle. Are different. Yeah. Because of, I mean, just it's our humanity, you know. So, so we can, but I think if we're purposeful in it, we, we seek out purposefulness and, and meaning in what we're doing, what we're experiencing. That really goes back to St. Ignatius of Loyola and his teachings about consolations and desolations, because consolations for us of faith, it turns us to look at God and what can he possibly mean for me in this time of difficulty and how is he calling me to grow? You know, that's the thing that we want to be looking at and that's how it can be. We find more meaning, right, in that than somebody perhaps who doesn't have a faith life. We see purpose in it. God is God's leading me to grow, which is exactly it, because Christ said, I came that you can have life and have it more abundantly. And God is always drawing us out to okay, grow Judy, to more. 
real quick, um, got about a minute left. Could you give us some resources that Absolutely. people can use to um, get through this time? Or what would sure. you recommend? So two books written by Greg Popchak. One is called God Help Me, The Stress is Driving Me Crazy. And the other is called Unworried, A Life Without Anxiety. Both of those are great resources and a lot of what I've shared with you today has come from those. Also, Greg and Lisa have, as you mentioned, the More to Life program that's aired yeah. Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. And uh, you can go find it in podcasts if you just type in More to Life on um in in march on the 24th and the 13th there were um, programs uh on anxiety and then also on march 20th was uh a parenting with grace which is another really good one and then um the, he has just opened up a facebook page called the oh yeah the, um, catholic home and it's h-o-m family discipleship. So people could go look uh, for that on Facebook. And it's a, a forum to really support us um, as uh, in, in the domestic church life, discussions about ways in which we're finding um, difficulties, but also suggestions that other people have. And then of course, our, our Catholic counselors website, www.catholiccounselors.com. And you can always call 866 Seven two four one one nine six, which is our uh, direct line if people are seeking out uh, Catholic counselors to help them. And what I'll do is I will go ahead and put, try to link up all that stuff both on the YouTube channel as well as the um, the Catholic Radio Indie podcast, so that people can get those resources. Just click the link. Well, Judy, um, thank you so much, Judy Phillips. I have to get your title right. Clinical Pastoral Associate in Distance Counseling for the Pastoral Solutions Institute. Thank you so much for being our guest today. And God bless you. We need to do a part two. Great. I would love to do that. I'm happy to help and, <laughs> and really welcome this opportunity. So thank you so much for having me. All right. Well, until next time, Judy, God bless. God bless you.